Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 15. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cash Flow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow 101 game, He's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. Hello, Cash Flow Diary listeners. Glad that you are here. Welcome to another episode of the CashflowDiary.com podcast. My name is Jay. If you haven't met me before, welcome. Uh, if you haven't listened to the first episode of the Cash Flow Diary podcast, please make sure you go over, over to iTunes, download the first one so that you can understand the background and format of the show. And while you're looking for free information, make sure that you get over to CashflowDiary.com. We have our free ebook. It is Investing Made Easier. It is for wholesaling. Wholesaling is simply a process that teaches and allows individuals like yourself and me to go out there and purchase real estate at a discount, sell it at a discount, uh, earn a fee in the middle and do that so quickly. I mean, uh, in my real estate career, I've been known to do these types of transactions in 72 hours or less and earning thousands of dollars in the process. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you go over to the website, cashflowdiary.com download the ebook you definitely will uh, be put on our list and what will end up happening is you'll start getting the free webinars where i i also explain how to do wholesaling as well as the ebook and you can go through the workbook etc and just from listening to the webinar and the ebook i know we've received reports now of people who've been able to write their first offers which is exciting and i, I know i'm excited to help anyone get started in their excellent journey and continue to become bigger better real estate investors <clears throat> Okay, so if you've been to the CashflowDiary.com podcast before, you know that one of the things that I love is quotes. So today's cash flow quote is as follows. It says, be careful to leave your sons well instructed rather than rich, for the hopes of the instructed are better than the wealth of the ignorant. That comes to us from a source that you may not be familiar with. In fact, he hasn't been alive for a long time. A man by the name of Epictetus. Epictetus. If you knew him already, then you already know that he is a Greek sage and Stoic philosopher, uh, born a slave. And I find it very interesting that, you know, from his perspective on life, he's able to come up with such wise words. It is better to leave your sons well instructed rather than rich. I mean, we've all heard stories of people who have left their kids, their children, or those the proverbial trust fund baby who doesn't know how to grow money, doesn't know how to protect money and all of those things. And what's really funny and special to me about this particular quote is that that's part of the genesis for even creating this podcast and everything that we do at the Cashflow Diaries, because I wanted to make sure that my children, of which there are four, had a record of what dad thought and thinks about the things that uh, we've been able to do so that they can continue in my absence Because as we all know, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow, so we got to make the most of today. And that's exactly what I want to do today. Today, we're going to talk about the five essential ingredients to building your wealth. And I want to make sure that you have those. So make sure that you have your notepad, your pens. Uh, This may be an episode you listen to many, 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 many times, and that's completely okay. So... I've got five things here, and if you've heard me before, you know that I I believe that most, if not all, business can be run with, you know, answering, answering five questions. So it's not just knowing the five questions, and it's not knowing someone else's answers to these questions that are going to make your business run. It's knowing your answers to these questions, and that's what's going to help you uh, figure out how to, you know, earn the income that you're looking for, because Depending on what you, your background is, I mean, hopefully, you know, you're not like Epictetus and you feel like a slave, but you, you may have a job, right? And, and it takes a certain amount of skill sets to earn money in that particular arena. And now you're wanting to learn how to earn money in a completely different arena. And that's good. However, we need different ingredients in order to build 
wealth. The five questions uh, that you will want to remember are, and in this order, why, what, when, who, how. Why, what, when, who, how. They're one-word questions, and if you can remember them in that order and answer them all the time, you'll be able to be very, very effective, in my opinion, at growing your business, leading people, uh, especially as your business grows and inviting new people in uh, to the mission and team uh, that it is that you are you know, conducting in order to achieve the goal that you're after. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give you some specific instruction on these five questions and most importantly, how you can answer them. And if you sit down in an exercise, my guess is in less than 60 minutes, you can come up with a very basic, executable um, business plan that can get you started so that you can no longer have to worry about <laughs> having these, you know, 12, uh, 12 page or 1200 page, I should say, documents that end up uh, never being looked at again uh, when it comes to business plans. In fact, most small business owners never had one to begin with. Uh, you just go out there and you, you start doing what you know how to do. So to give you some framework for this, uh, for your business, that's that's where these five questions or these five essential ingredients come from. And they pretty much dovetail with answering parts of these questions. So the first thing uh, that you must answer, as I've said before, is the why, right? You've got to have a desire. And that's the that's the essential ingredient uh, that answers the why question. Why? Why do you have to? do what it is that you're doing. See, as humans, we, we all take the path of least resistance. And that path of least resistance for most of us is go to school, get good grades, and get a job. Or maybe just go to school and get a grade, <laughs> depending on who you are, right? Get a grade and get a job. And that's the path of least resistance. You know, that's the path that's offered freely to most of us. And because, you know, we don't have, you don't need any additional special desire uh, to do that. So it, 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 think of it this way. Some of you may have grown up wanting to be, say, heavyweight champion of the world. Maybe you wanted to, because you, you heard, you know, what dad or mom said about Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay or any of the great fighters. Maybe you uh, consider Evander Holyfield uh, a fighter or Manny Pacquiao or any fighter that you like. The The point is, yes, I know that all of those that I just named were not heavyweights. However, you don't, you're not a heavyweight champion because you don't have to be. That's the key. You don't have to be. You aren't a multi-billionaire real estate investor yet because you don't have to be. You may not even be a real estate investor yet because you don't have to be. You 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 aren't a college graduate because you don't have to be. I know I'm not a college graduate, but maybe you are a college graduate. Uh, you haven't earned a million dollars because you, you don't have to. H here's my point. Our identity is a very strong force to be reckoned with. And until you or I have to be something, we usually won't be. We won't go out there. Our desire isn't large enough to actually go out there and and face the challenges to swim upstream so to speak and environment conquers our will more often than not and we must learn how to swim upstream in, in various ways and part of that is giving ourselves an understanding as to why do I have to do this you know if you've listened to episode one you understood some of the reasons why I feel that I have to do what it is that uh, I do over here at the cashflowdiary.com why I must invest time uh, with you and, and everyone everywhere I go uh, either on stage or in videos and all the other stuff that I I have to it's it's not because I, I just want to now the good thing is that I enjoy all this I, I had a podcast listener write in uh, last week he said it sounds like you enjoy every bit of what you do and he's absolutely right I, I am I feel very very fortunate to enjoy what I do, you know what I mean? Because there was definitely a time in my life for a number of years where I, I didn't, I didn't, and it wasn't fun. Here's the point, though. Until we see ourselves as that something that we're looking to become, nothing changes. Until I saw myself as a real estate investor, uh, nothing changes. Uh, I, the habits, the actions, the thought patterns, all those things started right there in that desire. I had to have a reason to do the extra work it's been said before that there's no greater work than man shrinks back from than thinking. 
And, you know, I, I kind of think that's true because we can find our ways over to various forms of entertainment that take up the time that we would ordinarily spend or invest, I should say, thinking and cultivating that desire and, and making it a burning have to. So think of it this way. Would you eat if you didn't have to? I know for me, there are many times where I can forget because I just get so focused on what it is that I feel like I have to do that if I didn't feel hungry, I wouldn't eat. I just wouldn't because I, I get so caught up in, in you know, the plans that we're making, the buildings that we're designing or redesigning and the, the plans of, uh, you know, which building we're going to go after next and, and helping people, you know, all, all those things get exciting to me and I get completely all focused from something as simple as food. And because I have to, I make time to stop and eat. And when you have to, you'll make time to do the work that needs to be done in terms of thinking about what you want, the why, what, when, who, and how that we're getting ready to go through. This desire by far is the most, most I'll say most important part. And without it, the, I, I can't give you anything else. I, I can't give you the rest of the techniques and content. Is, it's irrelevant if you don't bring this one to the table. So you've got to do this part. The rest, uh, I, we can help you with. And you say, well, my desire isn't that big. I don't have to. And I understand that. And, and maybe then your desire needs to be something that's outside just you. Maybe it's a mission. Maybe, you, you know, there's a cause uh, that you're seeking. And that'll help motivate you. And when you see that, instead of saying someone should do something about it, you become the someone that does something. And then take that challenge on and let that be the reason. Once you've got the desire, the next thing you need is uh, what I call a blueprint, using a real estate term there, blueprint, uh, a plan or business plan per, more popularly said is what most people think about. And when I say business plan, as I said before, I'm not talking about that 80 or 1200 pages of useless dribble uh, that has mission statements and all this other stuff that you never look at again. Uh, I'm talking about what are you going to do and when are you going to do it? Simple, keeping it very simple. Um, it, I'm, as I've said before, um, having not gone to business school, I, I had to keep and still like to keep things simple because simple is usable and it's executable. Simple can be communicated to other people. So remember the questions are why, what, when, who, and how. And when you have this blueprint, it says, what are you going to do? When are you going to do it? Period. And it, here's one of the unique things that I've learned. When we grow up in an environment that doesn't necessarily show us blueprints, we don't know how to create one. Uh, and it can be challenging to learn how to seek the information necessary that we need in order to even create the business plan. And one of the things that I love is that uh, about, you know, business in this process is the fact that learning, just simply learning how to find what it is that you need is a skill set in and of itself. And that's one of the things I, I like about, you know, podcasting and all this other stuff that we get to do is that we hopefully are answering some of those questions. How do I find, how do I put together a very simple business plan to take action? Now, one of the cool things about getting a blueprint is that it, blueprints don't have to be original. They just have to be executable. You just have to be very clear on what it is you're going to do and when you're going to do it. So uh, sometimes that blueprint comes in the form of a book, right? We've all picked up a book and said, hey, I want to do that, or I'm just going to model my business after uh, after what I just heard that guy do. I'm just going to do that. Sometimes, you know, for some of us, especially when it comes to real estate, we have these shows on TV that shows you how to rehab a house, hold it, rent it, all these other things. Maybe that becomes your blueprint. It doesn't really matter. You just need something to begin with. Now, you're going to refine it over time. So for those of you who are saying to yourselves, well, that's not detailed enough, Okay, fine. Refine it over time. My concern is more that you take action than you have a very pretty, perfectly T-squared blueprint to begin from. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, there's no value to having that. But if you've invested more time in creating the blueprint than you have taking action, that's the concern that I have. Because you're concerned about getting it right more than you are concerned about going out there and taking action. Now, one of the other 
forms of getting a blueprint, which happens to be kind of like my favorite these days, is the process of finding or hiring or uh, a coach or a mentor, or more popularly, or what was popular anyway, is the process of apprenticeship. And I like that because it, it, when it comes to apprenticeship, what happened is, you know, the the little your, your kids got to watch you out there in the field. And while they watched you in the field, they learned what to do. And as they learned what to do, they could repeat that over and over and over again. And that was important. That's what I'm talking about right now. That's not always possible, you know, for kids to learn what it is because dad goes off to work. Mom goes off to work and they can't see. And then they don't know how to do the things that, you know, need to be done in order to create value in the marketplace and generate an income. But apprenticeship is a very good way to get that blueprint. Uh, again, blueprints don't have to be original. That's one of the great things, especially about a service-based economy, is that when it's a service-based economy, it's hard to commoditize certain things. Therefore, you, it creates an opportunity for everybody based upon geographic location because one service can't serve everybody everywhere simultaneously when the need arises, which is why you have so many different you know, things like ambulance companies and taxi services. I mean, the idea of a taxi service isn't wholly unique. It's just not available everywhere. That's what creates the opportunity. So it's a simple uh, blueprint. Now, you can tweak your blueprints and add your little stamp and flair to it. But in general, you're doing the same thing. Same thing is very true with real estate. It is a service business. Uh, regardless of what you think, it's not a product. It's a service business. And your service can vary. Your levels of service can vary. And it varies based upon the type of customer uh, that you are looking to serve. So some of the simple things that you you want to know, like, you know, as a quick review here, is you got to know why you want to do something and what and when are you going to do it. So a uh, simple step is to write down, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to buy a piece of real estate. Good. Now when? And then do everything you go you or you need to do to go seek out the information that you need to actually execute by the date that you set. And you'd be surprised how a simple, how something that simple can begin to change your life. As I've said before, uh, I've worked with people with, you know, in less than three hours, people who have never written offers go out there and write offers. It, it doesn't take long and it doesn't even really take the whole three hours. But the point is, is that until someone has to do something, Oftentimes, we just don't take the action. I know I'm very guilty of this, right? <laughs> How many of us guys as husbands, right? We don't take out the trash until the wife makes sure that we have to take out the trash, right? You, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. So what's after that? After you have the blueprint, what must you do? You must sacrifice. Now, that's a word that is often misused these days and definitely misunderstood in my opinion. But uh, a sacrifice simply for me, and this is totally my definition, uh, is letting go of something you know to be good, something you know to be good. So hear that word for something you currently perceive to be better and of greater value. Because we've all had that time where something that we perceive to be better and of greater value turned out to not be. However, that doesn't remove the requirement of sacrifice. You still must do that. So what does that mean? That means that you should have a consistent calendar and or schedule for things like networking events, a prospecting plan, creating value sequences if you're trying to market yourself online with videos and podcasts and all the other stuff uh, so that your buyers and sellers can understand who you are so that they can find you and that you do something of value for them. You got to ask yourself this question. What do you give what are you willing to give up so that you can earn the right to receive see this concept of sacrifice has nothing to do with entitlement because you choose to develop your business plan listen to this podcast do the things you know maybe it could be something as simple as actually reading the ebook that we created for free on wholesaling and then committing to doing the exercises uh you know one afternoon so instead of going out to the movies with your friend what you've decided is that you're going to do that and that could be great for you but that's the concept, and you've got to continue to do that for a, for a long enough time. How long? Until it works. How long is that? Don't know. It's different for all of us. The point is, is you got to be willing to do it until it works.
Okay, so we're going to take a break for a second before we get to the next two things, the next two essential ingredients that you must have in order to build wealth. And we're going to talk about our cash flow question. Uh, the last time I remember uh, writing down a question was the following. It was, what is the number one skill all entrepreneurs must master? The answer, of course, is sales. And I've got an announcement here before I get to this week's question. So hopefully those of you who are listening and downloading first, you'll get the biggest and best advantage. And if you're hearing this now, you it tells you you need to be able to listen and download first. What we're going to do is following. I am coming out with a book. If you've been over to the website, you've probably seen a pop up or something talking about it. And what I'm going to do is for the first, hear me clearly, for the first three correct answers, the first three correct answers that come in via email only, uh, I will be giving a signed copy of the book. So normally we're only going to give away one, but since this is the first time that we're doing this, the first three correct answers that come in to cashflow question at cashflowdiary.com uh, to the following question. This is what we will do. And we will have a cash flow question from time to time, if not all the time, so that if you do not or are unfortunately unable to get uh, in as the first three this time, you will have another chance. So make sure that you have your emails ready. Bring, bring out your phone so that you can answer the following question. What is the process of anticipating and arranging for the disposal of an estate? What is the name of the process of anticipating and arranging for the disposal of an estate? There's a specific process. And at some point, once you own one piece of property, you should begin that process, if not sooner. And so that when things, you know, uh, end in the way that we all know that they eventually will, uh, you have a way of making sure that your estate is disposed of properly. So, uh, write down that or write in your answer. Make sure that when you send in your answer uh, that you also send in your address because otherwise it's going to be very difficult for us to mail you a copy of the book. It is currently scheduled for a fall 2013 release. So uh, no, you won't get it immediately, but you will be put on the list to make sure that you get a signed copy of the book. It is the title of the book. For those of you wondering, is the cash flow creation system 10 Steps to Creating Wealth in Any Economy. So, uh, scheduled for fall 2013. And again, three people send in the email and good luck. All right, let's get back to the next two ingredients. The next two ingredients are kind of tied together. Um, but remember, we're still answering the questions, why, what, when, who, and how. And in this particular one, it's a word that uh, I it's, you know, it's very dear and close to my heart, but it's the one that separates the men from the boys, uh, the big girls from the little girls, the ones who actually get there and the ones who don't. And it is the word commitment. And when I say commitment, I mean, actually following through on the uh, things that you said you were going to do, period. It, it Part of that also is a commitment to personal development, commitment to gaining the skills that you need uh, so that you can continue to stay inspired. I mean, there are many things to stay committed to, but you've got to be committed, most importantly, to the process and understand that this is not a destination. This is part of your journey. This is uh, one podcast episode that is part of your journey. And one of the things that has helped me to stay committed to this process is understanding this, is that there are two things that it is impossible to do simultaneously. You can't learn and, well, look good at the same time. If you've ever seen a, a human learn to walk, they don't look good while they're learning to walk, but they are learning. And once someone has learned something, that's about the time that they start to look good. That's when, you know, the kids start saying, Lay, mom, dad, look at me, look at me, look at me. Uh, they don't want you to look before then. And that's true for all of us. We don't like people to witness and watch our failures. Uh, we only want to show people the finished product. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Uh, we've got to be willing to fail. And in fact, in my opinion, one of the greatest obstacles to commitment is failure. And depending on how long you've been either A, uh, in the school system or the corporate environment, not only have you been trained, but you've also been rewarded for making the fewest number of mistakes. 
In fact, experimenting is punished with being laid off, fired, or or worse, emotional and mental criticism that sometimes come from ourselves. Understand this, w- without the commitment to this process, it, it won't matter. Uh, I, I like to tell my wife and others, at the beginning when you're new, you're, you're going to make what I call expensive mistakes. Uh, however, uh, if you are willing to go through that process at the end or during the journey, at some point, you'll start earning income relative to the expense of those mistakes later, which is good. And one of the things that is sometimes a challenge to remember is that building is a process. It's a brick by brick and over time process. You, you don't just erect a wall overnight you don't just you know yeah i know you've seen this prefab buildings and all these things but even that is a it's a process it's one wall at a time it doesn't just pop up i mean i wish if if you're very familiar with legos (laughs) if you're familiar with that it it takes a sometimes depending on what it is that you're building it can take a minute or two to put that thing together and it's one little lego piece at a time and you know what sometimes that lego piece it, the, one of the biggest and most important pieces is how we think, our context and understanding that. So making sure that we pick up the right books and gain the skills. Uh, like, for example, the answer to the question, sales, it's one of the fundamental things. So a question you should be asking yourself is, what's a good book that can help me learn to sell, especially if you've never sold anything? It's one of the biggest obstacles that I've seen. And and it's one of the greatest challenges is you got you got to face, oh, man. I've never sold anything. And now I want to be this, you know, business owner, real estate investor that that requires sales. Now, here's the good thing. This being committed answers a part of the who and the how question. One of the great things about business is the fact that you can leverage. Definitely the coolest thing about real estate, in my opinion. But you also leverage other people's expertise. So maybe you aren't going to be the one that does the sales and that's okay. However, just understand that sales is one of the most expensive things to outsource, okay? However, that doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means that when you are building your business model back in your blueprint, you need to account for that. You need to account for that within your business model. Uh, In fact, one of the things that you should uh, be doing is building an economic model along with that blueprint eventually, and you may need to enlist the competent counsel of a, you know, a CFO or an accountant or someone of that nature who has that skill set to help you build an economic model so that you can understand uh, what your cost of goods sold or cost of services would actually be. What's it going to cost you uh, or your contribution margin? If either one of those terms, contribution margin or cost of goods sold, is unfamiliar to you, Uh, I'm going to suggest very strongly that you move at the speed of instruction and go look them up so that you can begin to understand. Understanding these things will be the foundation that makes you a better wholesaler, makes you a better buy and hold person, makes you a better business person. If you eventually want to raise capital, you'll need to know it. All these things uh, become very, very key and important. All right. The next uh, essential ingredient is unyielding effective action. Uh, you got to do the right actions, do the right things long enough consistently. And here's the keyword, track them. This an- this squarely answers the how question, right? And when I say unyielding, nothing must get in the way. I-, I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but when I say nothing must get in the way, think of it. Imagine if you can, you were pregnant, hungry, and food was on the other side of the room. The most dangerous place to be would be between you and that food. And, and, and guys, you understand exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, standing in that path is a very, very bad place to be. And But nothing is going to get in her way from getting that food, is it? Absolutely nothing is going to get in the way from you getting to your goal. See, oftentimes we take our eyes off our goals, and that's when we begin to see the obstacles. Secondly to that, when I say effective actions, uh, they, they must have actions of impact. They must not just be busy work. Now, oftentimes, when we're afraid, I know of myself, I can think back to times when I've been afraid of actually taking the action that needed to be done, I found other things to keep me busy. For example, rearranging your desk 
right? Does your desk really need to be rearranged? I mean, the, the phone is on that side of the desk for a reason. It doesn't need to be on the other side of the desk. And if it does, don't do it now. Don't do it during the time of day when you should be contacting and inviting prospects so that you, you know, then run out of time. Is during the day when you're actually intending on creating or, or providing the product or service that you're after, that's not the time to go pick up laundry. Yes, you are an entrepreneur and yes, no one's telling you what to do and when to do it, but it takes an, inc uh, an incredible amount of self-discipline to begin to get this skill. Some of the things that I do is that I, I use a, a daily tracker. I've used that in the past. I teach other people to use it uh, so that you can track some of the basic things that you need to track. So here they are in no particular, well, actually kind of in an order. Uh, so the first thing that you need to track are, are new people that you uh, come in contact with. Well, that by default means that you should have a goal of meeting new people consistently. See, your business needs people, but not any one person, but you need to make sure that you are unyielding and effective at meeting new people. After you've met those people, you must have a way of inviting them to something. Doesn't matter what, but they've got to be invited to something. Maybe it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, so that you can just show them what your opportunity is if you're trying to raise capital or show them what the house that they could buy from you. It doesn't really matter. You must become unyielding and effective at inviting people to see what it is that you do. Now, here's the cool thing. You must get to the next step of getting them to actually show up to whatever it is that you're inviting them to. So if, even if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, we've all made appointments uh, with people and had them not show up, which is totally irritating, but it also gives you insight into their character. See, you're going to show up no matter what. You do what you do. You, you let your yes be yes, no be no. You're going to be there, but you also should hold that expectation of them. And don't be shy about letting them know that, okay? Uh, so after, you you know, you get good enough to invite them so that they show up, you, you then got to become excellent at letting them know and displaying and showing and presenting what it is that you have to offer, describing your product or service. But don't describe it from the point of just telling them about it. Describe it of the point of from addressing their concerns and how what it is that they're concerned about could actually result in or how taking your product or service actually results in solving their issues. And then uh, after you've done that, you've got to get good at following up with them and making sure that you consistently follow up with them all the time. So that that's one of the most important pieces and sometimes can be very, very scary. And then eventually you must learn to do what uh, is popularly known as closing. I would call it more like opening the relationship to new, bigger, deeper ways and more opportunities than it is closing any particular thing. So uh, those are the pieces that must continue and must definitely still be together. But you've got to be unyielding and effective at those. And you've got to be willing to track them. you got to be willing to stare zeros in the face when <laughs> you've made a goal. You said, hey, I'm going to make sure that I present 15 times to people this week. And then at the end of the week, you're like, ooh, I've only did two. And you've got to be willing to be held accountable to that. And more importantly, here's one of the things that uh, I use to teach and, and continue to say to people is, you know, there was a time uh, in my life where I would say, the following phrase, five yeses a day keeps poverty away. What that simply meant is if I got five new people every day to say, yes, I would sit down with you, come to your presentation or something, whatever it is, so long as I got five new people every day to do that, you would be able to convert and earn enough money to make a living. And uh, it's very, very true if you continue to do that. Now, how you invite those people, that's where the creativity comes in. It's not that you don't have to do the work. You still have to do the work. The point is, just keep doing it. And one of the things to, to understand is that fear comes in various forms of disguises, and it gets easy without these tracking systems to say that I've been working. Well, if you've spent eight hours and all you made was two phone calls, I, you'll see that on your tracking sheet. And it's a simple question. How long does it really take to make a phone call? I mean, even if they pick up and you answer and you talk for a while, how long does it really take? And you, you've got to be willing to 
hold yourself accountable, be held accountable to, especially if you're using a mentor or an apprenticeship program, that, look, you, you just didn't work. And that's okay at the beginning. You've got to learn a new skill set and how to incorporate this into your life, you know, thus far. And that's not always easy, uh, but it can become more familiar. And, and the most important thing is that it prevents you from confusing activity with accomplishment. So in closing, this is what I'd like to share with you. The above steps that we've outlined today, they're easy. However, something that is easy to do is also easy not to do. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.